welcome to the Cabbage Novel vlog. I'm your host Nadia and this is a vlog that accompanies the Cabbage Notebook vlog and podcast and YouTube is where I usually put all of those things that don't necessarily fit into the audio podcast and um, that goes for iTunes so if you want to listen to some interviews with your favourite indie dyers or designers you can pop on over to cottagenotebook.ie forward slash read and forward slash listen to either read or listen to those over there. Um, now, just some administrative things. If you want to join the Cottage Notebook group, you can over on Ravelry. It's been very quiet pre-Woolen, um, which was May, the end of May this year, but it's starting to kind of pick up again, or you can join the Facebook group or reach out all the time. Also, a huge thank you to all of the Patreon supporters who allow me to grow the College Notebook just for you. It's been amazing. Um, I'm really looking forward to getting to know you all. Um, the, one of the things that I wanted to do, which you can probably kind of tell, is I'm going to do my new Echo Dance of Joy because this is the Simple Crochet Jumper from um, the last uh, vlog, which I did last week. It is, I, Finally put on a second sleeve um, and I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that. We're going to discuss Malabrigo in a different way because it's something that I always like to highlight, the yarn that I'm actually using and for once it is not an indie dyer because um, I do get accused of favours in indie dyers, which I do. Um, I love you guys. Um, so we can have a look at that and um, let's kind of vibrating because I'd like to kind of keep the fog a little bit short. So um, this is the simple crochet sweater which is um, by Brianna and uh, it's on the Simply Homemade Happiness blog. I'm going to double check that. And um, the it's a really really simple um, crochet stitch. It's literally made in pieces and you put them all together in her blog. It is a free pattern, um, but there is an option for a paid pattern with assistance on Ravelry, so do check that out. I will pop everything in the show notes. Um, the It is literally double crochet, some single crochet, some double crochet, and um, the blog pattern does require some width stitches, but I actually crocheted everything together to give a reinforced seam, especially because the stunningness of this jumper is actually at the back. So let me just do a turn around and do this. You can see how awesome this is for, um, even to this side, how awesome this is for, um, for the beach, which is basically why I made it. Her pattern does suggest to do it from linen, but um, it, I'm not a linen person. I don't like working with it. I did make um, chicane, which is a beautiful um, red lace. Um, similar kind of style, kind of boxy, it isn't fitted. Um, and you can find that on my Ravelry page. And I am going to on Ravelry. Um, and I made that last year out of um, Zoe, which is Juniper Moon yarns. And um, while I enjoyed it and it was much softer than I thought it would be, it was still a little bit crisp. So I was really looking forward to seeing what. Um, the lovely ladies from This Is Net Picked Up at Woolen, so I'm actually going to pop in there a little bit later. Um, so I chose to make this from Rios. <laughs> I know there's a lot of people who are probably looking a little bit confused right now because Rios is an iron weight and um, it's also a secret wash yarn and it's kind of heavy. And I'd like to point out that I'm Irish. I live right beside the beach and the wind is fierce. Um, so even days when I'm down on the beach and I'm photographing, you, you kind of want the warmth of something like Rios that you can kind of put on and kind of cuddle into, um, which Rios is just amazing for. And um, still have the kind of breeziness that the crochet jumper allows. I don't generally use um, crochet uh, as a garment thing. I, I generally don't, but um, I'm trying to find a style that I like because I like to make things that I will wear. Um, I've found over the years that as a maker I end up with dozens of shawls and dozens of cowls and hats and um, I don't wear them all so I've been trying to increase my handmade wardrobe which you can see um, over on my blog. It's 
uh, in the category handmade wardrobe, you can find the link in the show. Um, and I've divided it up for uh, kids and for what I make for me, so you can find a lot of my craft posts there. Um, so one of the things that I wanted to talk about today was while I was working in this business, I'm listening to you guys talk a lot um, about Malabrigo. One of the things that um, I heard a lot was, or one of the things we discussed a lot was how it wears. So what I thought I would do is show you, rather than showing you this, this shiny new jumper, uh, that I would show you some um, garments and their age and show you how they've worn. So um, first up, I'm going to show you my very first Malabrigo garment. And this is, and it's open for a reason, this here is, I'm trying to see if you can see this is about seven years old and this is Malabrigo worsted so this doesn't have a super wash finish and what I'm going to do is try and show you the arms because mostly the wear in Malabrigo it will felt underneath the arms and it's going to bobble a lot so this one I still wear every winter and it still looks great um, I wash it using soak and um, how I care for the garment. Um, I have a guide over on the website, um, but I also have a um, poem that I got from Mrs. Ned and it's, I had one of those little electric kind of buzzers, but I found that it was kind of yanking the yarn and breaking it, and especially if it's kind of thin in places, um, it doesn't, it can break a garment. Uh, so the actual hand comb is amazing, I'll link to it as well. Um, and it has different blade sizes depending on what it is that you're trying to do. And I have just literally um, cared for that using that and soak every year and then I package it away. Um, lately, I have, normally I package away my winter garments, but it hasn't been on season, it only got unseasonably hot about three weeks ago, so I haven't put them away yet. But um, and for those who are wondering, this is Malabrigo Worsted in the colorway V88. And um, it has, I'm going to show you the stocking stitch side. Stocking stitch side. And this is actually, this is the outside, the, the reverse stocking stitch. Um, and the garment is by Vera Valamaki and it's golden wheat. And uh, Jenny has a lovely one from Townhouse Yarns in Malabrigo Rios in teal shade. And it's absolutely stunning. Um, she made hers much longer um, and with three quarter length sleeves as well. Um, so yeah, seven years old, still looks great, so wear it. Um, but you're going, Nadia, but you're wearing Rios. Yes, I am. And there's a few reasons why I choose Rios. And number one, it is super wash. And when I want a pattern to drop, um, especially the way I want the reverse of this to drop, um, Rios is amazing for it. And it's just, Rios is my, Rios is my iron of choice for an iron weight. Um, I love the fact that it's semi-solid and um, you can get some beautiful colourways. This right here is an Andy Salalon pattern. Um, and I know there's quite a few podcasters who, who really love her. And I know was it Katie from Cycling for 23 um, had that cow for Embry Yarn Festival as well. And I love her pattern. So this is Miette. This is... I want to say five years old, four or five years old, and it's worn incredibly well. Um, again, it's just some light bobbling. The colorway is sunset, and it took two and a half skeins to do in the second size. Um, this, by the way, took three skeins exactly. There is uh, like small scraps left, and that includes all of the crochet seams and everything, and I have three quarter length sleeves. I have very badly blocked three quarter length sleeves because um, it's literally off the hook. Um, and my other favourite of Malabrigo is their sock. And I do have a finito favourite, but I don't have this finished garment here. I have a clockwork scarf by Stephen West in Malabrigo Finito, um, which I absolutely love. You'll see it on my Instagram in the winter a lot. Um, it's just the most cuddliest thing um, and it is four years old and it's fine. It hasn't pilled at all. Um, I will say that if you were ch if choosing to knit with Malabrigo and it doesn't have a super wash finish, 
be smart with the patterns that you choose. Um, if you want longe longevity, then maybe a lot of stocking stitch isn't going to wear particularly well, especially if it's a garment and around here, and um, it will pill. Um, the tighter the stitch, the more texture in the stitch, the better it'll wear. Um, this is the colour affection, which is one of my other favourites. I realised it's upside down. There we go. This here is colour affection. Um, it is two sets, <laughs> three different schemes. So it's actually sunset, which you can tell is one of my favourites. A briel is the second one. And this third one here, which makes it look like a fruit salad. Do you remember those facets? Fruit salad sleeves. Um, these guys, that pink is actually from Laura Hogan from Ellie and Ada, but the, the rest of it is Malabrigo and I made this when Vera released Colour Affection. Um, I can't even remember when that was now, five or six years ago, um, and it's still something that I wear all the time, hasn't pilled, it's garter stitch, it wears well. Um, I do know people who say that they didn't have the same look, like they made garments out of um, Benito and they didn't wear well. Um, I will say you need to be careful about how you wash it, how you handle it. Um, it's a luxury garment, so I, I wouldn't wear it every day. They would be sweaters that I would take care of and wear nowhere near the kids. Um, if it has a super wash finish, I'll wear it around the kids. Um, this is why I made this particular jumper, because um, Caitlin is allergic to um, a lot of long staples. She's throwing up lots of rashes and stuff when I pick her up, and it's just, it's not worth it. So, um, I, if I want a collar, like the way Golden Wheat is supposed to stay up, I will choose Malabrigo Worsted. Um, if I want something that's kind of floppy, I'll choose, I'll choose this. Um, and there's another reason why I don't want to show you. So, um, I love the colour weights, I love their depth of colour. So this is Azul Profundo, which is one of my favourites. And then they released this winter, 2017, they released Winter Lake, which is just not fun. You can see all my and um, their, their semi-solids are fab. This one is Plomo and um, it has a little bit more kind of pink and purple throughout the grey, um, which generally for crochet, depending on how you work those stitches, can come out in, in really odd ways. So definitely do a test swatch if you're crocheting with it. If you are knitting with it, remember to always alternate your scheme. Um, I'm sure a lot of you old knitters who have been doing this for a while, you're like, that's Nadia, we know this already. Um, and also, there are depths of red. This is coming up a bit weird on camera, but this is a, a blood, blood red. Um, in actual, let's see, it's light change. It's blood, blood red. Um, and this is for spritz sprites in um, a Carol Feller. I bought the yarn uh, so that I can make the, the top for woolen. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this was supposed to be my woolen cowl um, garment, and I was doing really well, and I only had the sleeve to go um, two weeks prior to woolen, I think, um, if you were following me in the threads. Um, and yeah, it uh, didn't, didn't happen. <laughs> And one of the other reasons that I really like Malabrigo is to do with their company and their ethos. And it's one of the things that I think that Lisa and Jackie do and Jenny do really, really well for Mrs. Knit is they research um, the companies and their, their yarns and where they come from. And they like to support um, companies that they can get behind. And um, I know Lisa is a huge supporter of women, women in business as well. And um, Malabrigo has a company which is has expanded drastically over the last um, say decade, just over a decade, 20, 
2005 or 2007, I think, is when they started. I can't remember which one. Um, but they also predominantly hire women, and um, they have a focus on people who have less job opportunities in their area. So if you pop on over to the website, you can see their hiring policies. Um, and also, they have a huge sustainability and eco-conscious um, production as well for as best they can. They are also situated in Uruguay, and they largely produce um, yarn from the merino flock that they have. They do obviously import more. Um, they also have um, the. They, in 2010, they expanded their production into thermal and. Um, for all of the water baths to uh, heat them up, and they also use non toxic dyes. You won't find uh, formaldehyde in any of their products, um, which for me was a big thing. <laughs> uh, chemist's background. Um, and they um, also, in 2017, they took a second step with uh, their eco diversity as well. And if you are more interested in the company's background, you can pop on over to malabrigoyarn.com and you can. They have a full um, disclosure on their website and feel free to contact them, they will reply. Um, they're absolutely lovely. Um, the other thing, what was I going to say? If you are lucky enough to live in the States, um, Malabrigo uh, have launched their Malabrigo packs, which you may or may not have heard of. So if you want to know more about those, you can pop on over to Malabrigo packs or there is a Malabrigo packs group on Ravelry, uh, which I'll link below, and they are basically, um, it's a subscription pack, um, I think it's like $22.50, and currently they only ship to the US, so I'm really sorry to anyone who's watching from Ireland, uh, I'm kind of hoping they'll expand it, but um, currently that's where they are. Uh, Malabrigo also has, over the years, has been a huge supporter of the indie designers, and they had an indie designer support program. Um, and it, I've always loved what they've done. Um, that has currently changed within the last uh, year that's changed. Um, and I'm not sure what's happening with their indie program. Um, they do offer uh, patterns and everything with their Malabrigo yarn subscription packs, but I'm not sure what's happening there. Um, I don't even see the group or any, any talk like that. So if anybody does know, just put it in the comments so that I can learn to do. Um, I'm really not up on board with that. Um, but yeah, big love for Malabrigo for me. Um, also, I find that all of their yarns are colour fast. Um, they, they've never, I've washed three or four garments together, they've all been strongly coloured um, and they've all been fine. So uh, if you're really unsure, if you are doing that, I'm, I tend to this is really not eco-conscious, but I tend to um, pop in a colour capture if the dye is particularly, if I think that that's particularly going to be a problem. Um, but yeah, there you go. Oh, Rita, wasn't that fun? Can I do, can I do one more sec again? Ah, I'm um, very excited about this, really I am. Um, my husband knows that I knit and he knows long before we got married about my yarn obsession and um, and it is an obsession because I have way too much yarn. Um, but I kind of gifted uh, two crates of yarn, large crates, I think they were like 20 litres, um, to charity. Forty. They were big, they were on rollers. Um, the big IKEA ones on rollers. Um, and they, um, <laughs> that meant that I had enough yarn that would fit just in the craft room. Um, but he sees what I make every now and again, and I haven't been able to knit or do anything in a large number of months. And I'm just able to kind of start getting back into um, into doing things now. And I put this on this morning, and I was like, you know, getting ready because we want to do pictures for the blog post that this video was hosted in, and um, and for Instagram as well. And he, uh, he just went. Wow, you make that? Wow, you know crochet, and uh, it was really odd in the in the sense of wow, you really pay attention. And <laughs> um, anyway, for those who are asking uh, to move on to my album, which I realised I just stopped um, midway. Uh, this. 
actually need to finish the row. So I'll continue talking, finishing the row, so I can show you. Um, so I hope you are noticing. Uh, I am currently making um, an abalone, which is a just this guy. Um, it is um, made with dropped alpaca, and there is a reason. And yes, I am a huge supporter of indie dyers, and I'm showing you two things that are being made that aren't from indie dyers. Um, the Avalon pattern is by the Abbott Jasek, who is the dyer behind Hedgehog Fibre in Cork. And um, the pattern is free and it's on her website. And I think it's more of a guide. Um, so if you just want to make a cardigan and you're not sure, um, it's a really nice summer cardigan. It's nice as a layer. You can pop it over a long sleeve and it will be fine. Um, I am very quickly, I'm knitting as I'm speaking. Um, and yeah, you can find it there, and it is also available on Ravelry, you can add it to your library. And I chose Drops Alpaca because I was at the Constant Knitter way back when she had this, and this has been in my whip pile. Shame. This has been in my whip pile for um, years. <clears throat> Cough. Uh, <laughs> for years. And it, um, I put it down and for some reason the stocking stitch just really put me off and again it's really small needles which I don't tend to like but the more years that I spent knitting the more that I've really enjoyed them so um, the thing about it is it's a bottom up construction and it is a scalloped edge at the, at the bottom and it has the strangest yet smartest idea for armhole because uh, normally I'm used to dividing for the front back sleeves when you do bottom up and that's not how this one works. Um, this one you, I also cheated because I'm doing them all together. Um, so this one, I'm just at that point now which is what I wanted to show you. So this is the back. Whatever. This is the back, front side, armhole front side armhole. So I have three skeins of yarn on the go. So I have, or three balls, one ball. And then I have one ball that is split into two smaller balls. And um, so what you're doing is percentage wise, you're working, you're working off percentages off your stitches from your gauge. So yes, you have to do a gauge square, um, which is really important. You should always do it. Um, so you see the bottom? This will, so it's in one piece from the bottom to here and then you do the front section, back section, front section, then cleverly, there's no shaping, there's no addition of stitches, same number, and very cleverly you're going to fold them over like that. And then, can you see that? Then that will form your front. I know it's navy yarn, it's hard to see on the screen. But this side, then you're just going to fold them over and graft them together. But you're going to graft the inside, facing inside. Um, and then that form, forms your armhole. And then you knit on a border. And you do the same on the other side. And then you do the same all along the front. So it's a very open fronted cardigan. Um, it reminded me of an adult version of the Kelly Brooker pattern. Um, I can't remember her married name right now. Um, who did the Procurian cardigan? Um, um, I'm really bad with names. People don't think that's true when I say it, but it is really true. Um, the I know it was a Kelly Brooker pattern, but I can't remember her married name, and I'm really sorry. Um, I'll put a link to it in the show notes, but the, she had a pattern that was um, birth spray for newborns and this kind of, I was like, oh, I really, really want one of those. And then I found Avalone, which is um, also it's an older pattern. Yeah, I remember this coming out years ago and um, I went, oh, I must knit that for me. Picked up, I went, oh, I want a summer one. I don't think I want to knit in a pattern way. Fell in love with this colorway from um, Drops Alpaca, and it's really beautiful in that it um, 
have a deep purple in there and you can you can really highlight it so it'll look really good with white really good with purple um colors that you know i don't actually wear a lot of white but for tops underneath it's kind of nice um and i tend to with very heavy garments i tend to only be able to wear them a couple of months of the year so in ireland layers are where it's at um and also if you had a thin jumper underneath that you could get away with it which is something that i really really love in the pattern um yeah so for those of you who are asking for me to do a youtube video is it what you expected really is it um <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, the abalone pattern uh, is free and I will link to that in the show notes and for all of the show notes for today if you are looking for links to either Malabrigo, to the yarn subscription packs, to any of the groups where you can find me and um, they will be over on cottagenbook.ie forward slash read and it will be called craft my handmade wardrobe slash Simple crochet sweater. <laughs> that was good, right? Um, so you can find all of those there. Um, up and coming on the podcast, if you listen to the audio podcast, um, you can find audiograms below this video and you can subscribe both here on YouTube, hang the subscribe button, and you can subscribe over on iTunes as well. Um, or you can just listen to them from the blog and I also have a listen page. Um, so it's fully accessible whether you're Apple, Android, whether you want to take it on the go or not. Um, the interviews previously have been in no particular order with um, <laughs> Carrie Westerman, uh, Kate from A Playful Day, um, there's Grace from the Lovely Babbles Traveling Yarns, and we're going to do something soon that's going to be so fun. Um, I'm so excited, Grace. And um, Grace, if you're watching, I have to. Oh, yeah. You're good. Um, and you guys are going to have to stay tuned to see what that's all about. Um, the. Um, Lovely Carol Feller, Woolly Wormhead, Lisa Fisk um, talks about woolen, and I promise there will be a follow-up follow interview at some point when I can pin her down. Um, the there the next interview is with the lovely Emma from Woolly Mammoth Fibers, and she has some gorgeous, gorgeous yarn, which is all naturally dyed as well. So she did a written interview for me um, a few months back. So the audio interview was very much about finding where she is now with her journey and the explosion that she's kind of um, gone through in the last couple of months because Willy Mama's Fibers is not yet a year old, which is really unbelievable being that Emma has been featured in Lina magazine and she's got some amazing collaborations coming up. So if you want to hear from her and about her business and how she grew as an indie dyer, um, you can find that coming out this Friday um, when this video goes live. It will be this Friday and um, that will be on the audio podcast and you can grab the audiogram down here. Mm -hmm. It also features um, questions from Patreon subscribers. So if you do have questions for people that will be coming on the show, the I will release the guest the week before they appear on the podcast to the Patreon subscribers and you can pop your questions in there for them and uh, I will ask the guests when they came on the show. Um, and so far that's kind of that's working kind of well. Patreon is new for me. And uh, if you want to find out more about Patreon, you can pop on over to cottagenotebook.ie for no, you can't. You can pop on over to patreon.com forward slash cottage notebook. And um there is a Patreon video there which I really need to redo because I'm no longer scared to be on camera. And um you can uh, subscribe for as little as a dollar a month and that will allow you access to the audio podcast, which is specifically for Patreon members. I know, if you need more of me. Um and there's uh, for five dollars and more there's also access to the podcast um and also um an e zine and then for which is for gardening and DIY and helping you to grow your own food along with some other fun things. And um, also for ten dollars or more, there's also a like hangout and some other stuff. So you can check on check all of the rewards that are available over on patreon.com forward slash coach notebook. And I can't believe I've been talking for half an hour. This is time.
and stuff. Um, if you need more from me, you can find me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and I'm Carla Shepherd over there too. And if you guys have any questions or things that you would like me to cover in the vlog, please pop them in the comments of the video. Um, and I will do that. I'll do my best. I'll do my best. Um, other than that, I will see you guys in this vlog on YouTube. I will see you guys in a week. Um, I have some fun things planned for the summer for you guys. And I think it's about time you see some of the behind the scenes stuff of what I do because last year I was a little busy and the one question that I got asked over and over and over and over again is um, what I do and I don't do YouTube generally so let's see how this goes we'll see if it's a, a fun format that you enjoy and I enjoy and let's try and keep it going so if you do like it hit subscribe comments if there's anything that you like that I create be it blog posts audio um Instagram stuff like that Please do share it and please do share it with the tag Cottage Notebook, either at Cottage Notebook or with the hashtag Cottage Notebook so that I can find it. Thank you. Um, and also there will be some um, giveaways. Yes, Willie Mount Wamath Fibers has a giveaway on the iTunes podcast that comes out on Friday. So do make sure that you tune into that. And if you want to catch up with the archives, you can do that on either on iTunes. Um, or you can do that on collegenetwork.ie forward slash listen and um, it goes right back to the start where I started talking about my garden um, and just launching the podcast you'll see from episode three things took a sharp turn um, but I will be bringing back uh, more gardening into the vlogs as well so vlogs, vlogs, whatever into the vlogs as well um, because lots of people have been asking about my garden and what I'm doing and what I'm growing and if you follow me on Instagram um, I do lives every now and again from in the greenhouse and in my back garden and especially now and um, Storm Hector um, I did have babies, I did have lilies, I did have apples, I don't need more and um, Storm Hector razored my, my back bed, razored my garden. I, I think our garden, our back garden is a wind tunnel. I think I'm just going to have to come to accept that. Um, no matter how sheltered it is from the sea um, and how amazing it is likewise, um, it, it doesn't deal well with wind. So there will be more on that in a different podcast because I've yammered on for long enough now. So um, for me, thank you for watching. Uh, hit subscribe, hit share if you like it. Um, leave your comments, your favorite Malabrigo um, things in the comments. If you have a favorite Malabrigo pattern, share it in the comments. Um, or, and you can also find links over in the Ravelry group if you want to start a thread there, or you can do it in the Facebook group too. Uh, that's all for me. I'll see you guys soon. And thank you for watching. Grow, craft, love. Bye-bye.